Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. I'm just getting back from a hike with my dog and uh, I found this awesome little spot out in the trails that I didn't realize was there. Uh, it's just next to one of our fields. There's kind of this tucked away spot in behind some pines. It's nice and flat, sheltered from the wind. Um, and I was thinking that could be an awesome spot to have a, uh, a campsite at home. Seeing as all the crazy COVID-19 stuff's going on and all the Crown Lands currently closed for camping, provincial and uh, national parks are all closed as well. It might be fun to build a bit of a campsite at home and that way we can still have a spot to uh, kind of get away, unwind, have a fire outside and kind of sleep under the stars sort of thing if this goes on for much longer. So I'm going to get some tools together and we're going to go over that way and we're going to start clearing some of the dead brush and uh, building our campsite. Alrighty, we got the saw and uh, all the tools that we'll need for now to get this campsite started. So we're gonna head on out into the uh, out into the trails and start working on it. So we're driving out right now into the uh, the trails on the property. Um, fortunate enough to uh, at my parents' house have 50 acres to uh, play on. And right now, basically the idea is that we might not be able to get out and do very much camping this year. So I'm hoping that uh, I can kind of make a fun spot that uh, me and the dog or whoever else in the family or a couple friends, if they kind of want to get outside, kind of get away from it all, um, that we can have a spot that is uh, super easy to access um, and we can kind of do our own thing on. Um, and not just be kind of, you know, sitting out back or trying to pitch a tent uh, right behind the house. It's, it's more, a little bit more like, like actually camping, except uh, that much easier to access on our own property. So I think it'll be fun. It'll be a fun little project to build it. And uh, I think it'll be really fun to be able to test gear. And if I'm going on a long camping trip, be able to uh, come out and camp out a night and kind of see some of the things I might have forgotten and be like, oh crap, yeah, that would be really good to have for this trip or whatnot. You know, kind of test the setup, test uh, test out the gear and whatnot. Because uh, as you guys know, if you've seen some of my other videos, right now I'm working on um, kind of an overland setup, uh, truck camping out of the back of this truck. My uh, my truck cap is uh, it's gonna be here tomorrow, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and then I can start to build the bed and get the rest of the setup done. Um, then, uh, yeah, this this way it kind of gives me a good spot to like actually test things out, see how it works, see what I like, see what I don't, maybe see what I'd like to change. Um, yeah, sort of things like that. So I'll definitely let you guys know how it goes and uh, keep you uh, posted as, as we do this. But right now, we're just heading out there. It's a bit of a tight turn at this one spot, so I gotta do it in a couple moves. Sorry if the camera's bouncing around a lot. See you in a bit. All right guys, so here we are, welcome. Welcome to the uh, soon to be family property campsite. Uh, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but I'm gonna start clearing a couple of these little trees. There's a few dead guys around and uh, a lot of these hawthorn little shrub bushes. Uh, I'm gonna use the sawzall to take them out just cause it's a lot easier to get the blade right into the dirt opposed to uh, wrecking a nice chainsaw blade. So we're gonna start in some of that, clear all those, cut down a few of these trees. Um, then get the tractor over here and uh, mow up this grass and uh, kind of pick a spot for a campfire. I'm pretty excited, so follow along.
So I got a little stuff out of the way now, so I'm gonna pile it all up, chop it up a bit smaller so it's easier to burn, uh, and then get this bigger saw out and start on some of the little bigger trees. What I'm using right now is a uh, Milwaukee M18 uh, fuel sawzall with a one foot demolition blade, so it's good for just about everything. Um, it's awesome cutting little stuff like this because you don't have the saw running the whole time. Um, <clears throat> super easy battery will last honestly a whole day if you've got a 9.0 heavy duty battery. Um, I'm not worried about wrecking the blade either. It's, it's designed to go through metal, steel, plastic, tile, whatever. So sticking it in the dirt a bit, no issues, opposed to wrecking a really expensive chainsaw blade and spending uh, spending an hour trying to resharpen that and salvage it afterwards. So this is uh, definitely the way to go for little brush, uh, little trees, stumps, crap like that. Um, but then once you get into the bigger stuff, you wanna chop up firewood, the uh, actual chainsaw will be much quicker. So that's all the little stuff out of the way. Now we're gonna take down a few of these bigger uh, dead trees. Um, and that should finish us up, uh, get us some firewood and kind of get the area prepped and ready to start cutting the grass. Um, what I'm using today is a Milwaukee M18 uh, brushless chainsaw. It's uh, obviously a cordless uh, electric chainsaw, which I know a lot of you guys are gonna frown upon an electric saw. I do have a still on the back of the truck here. Um, but for little stuff like this, this is honestly way easier. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm a, a Milwaukee fan. I have uh, tons of different tools from different manufacturers, but um, Milwaukee was kind enough to send me this, and um, I know it sounds like a sponsored plug, but honestly, this thing is awesome. If you're gonna be spending a whole day out in the bush cutting trees, cutting firewood, yeah, grab your gas saw. That's gonna be quicker, more powerful, uh, longer run time because you can just fuel it up and go. But uh, if you're gonna be doing some more pruning, small trees, anything under like eight inches round, this thing is honestly a beast. I put an Oregon blade on it, or an Oregon, uh, Oregon bar, Oregon bar and chain, uh, I think it's a 16 inch, and I've had no problems at all with this thing. It's, it's honestly awesome, it really impresses me. <clears throat> it's been, uh, it's good, just all you do is put bar oil in it, keep the chain sharp, and put a fresh battery in it. It does run better on these bigger batteries. This is the uh, high output HD 12.0. Um, the saw comes with it in a kit. Um, if you buy the saw separately, you're gonna be uh, really putting out quite a bit of cash to buy one of those batteries, so I definitely recommend getting this in a kit if you are interested. Um, if you already have a gas saw, probably not something you need to add to your lineup, but if you're looking at getting a saw, um, it's, you're not a rancher, you're not a farmer, you're not uh, relying on firewood all the time, um, then this is definitely a good way to go. It's, it's quite a bit cheaper than a still saw. A lot easier to maintain, it's really plug and play kind of thing, put the battery in and you're off to the races. And if you're not cutting big stuff, it's great. If you're gonna push it every once in a while, it's totally fine. Um, I brought it up to the cottage once, um, cutting some small trees, ended up getting into a lot bigger stuff than I had intended. Fortunately, I have a few of these batteries so I didn't have to wait for charges, but uh, it, it performed awesome. I'm honestly like really impressed with it. Pretty much, if, uh, if you can cut it with a 16 inch bar, this'll do it. I'd say it's just as powerful um, as any of the uh, any of the more entry level uh, gas chainsaws on the market. If you're looking at the pro saws, yeah, obviously it's no comparison. Um, but any of the entry level saws, still and huskies included, it, it's a pretty awesome tool. I've been pretty happy with it so far. Anyways, so let's get at her.
So I've got the tractor set up behind me right now. You have the moor deck on it, and I'm gonna start cutting some grass, kind of clear the area out. Um, and that should kind of give me a feel for how big I want the site to be and if I need to take out any other trees or anything like that. Um, and at the very least, kind of expose some of the high spots and then I need to kind of dig down to make more of a flat camping area. And uh, hopefully we have enough room, don't have to take too much more out, but follow along and start cutting. just about done cutting grass. Um, I've definitely exposed a few spots that I want to dig down, so I'm going to do a little bit of loader work, um, try and level off some areas, and then hopefully we can uh, figure out exactly where we'd want to park vehicles and put a fireplace. Alrighty guys, so the campsite behind me, it's pretty much all uh, all done for today, at least as far as we're going to go for now. Um, my buddy Jake is going to come over with his tractor uh, hopefully in the next day or so. He's got a uh, tiller and a grader on the back of that, so we're gonna be able to till this up and grade it a little bit smoother. We've got a bit of a hill towards the back side there that I'd like to smooth out so that the uh, truck or tents are parking a little bit more flat. Uh, I'm gonna throw down some fresh grass seed once he's done with that, and then we'll be able to pick a spot for the fire, get that dug out, and uh, get our fireplace built. But as for the uh, tree removal and shrubs and stuff like that, we're pretty much done. Uh, done as far as we can go until we can get the soil tilled. So anyways guys, thanks so much for uh, checking this out. Anyways guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. Anyways guys, till the next time. Peace. <laughs>